All right, so I'm here with Mike Binder, uh, writer director of Black or White, and one of the stars, Anthony Mackey. Uh, thanks for joining me both. Thanks today. for having us. What's up? So I want to start off talking. Okay, the, the movie's called Black or White, but it really deals in a lot of gray areas. That's actually, right. uh, talk a little bit about just the themes of this movie and what you were trying to kind of hit on. Yeah, uh, the movie's really about two uh, grandparents that are, are raising. <laughs> Yeah, Greg, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I answer? Can I start that start answer that over? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want me to answer? It? No. I read um, the script recently. No, I'm sorry. That was. I, 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 this is why he stopped acting. It's a comedy. Right? <laughs> it's a, the movie. The movie is a comedy. There's a lot of laughs, and it's about two grandparents that have to figure out what's the best thing to do for this little girl. And it, I, to me, it's really an analogy of where we're at this country. You know, it's two groups coming together, having to figure out what's the right thing we want to do for the next generation. And, um, you know, it's got, I've got world-class actors. You know, there's a lot of laughs. There's a lot of emotion. And hopefully it's just an entertaining ride. Now, Anthony, your, your character, Jeremiah, you're, you mm -hmm. play a lawyer who's kind of working with, um, her, uh, her the child's black family to try to um, get custody of mm -hmm. her. In one scene of the movie, your character, uh, as they're kind of strategizing what to do in the courtroom, he actually says that um, he brings it up like we should kind of play the race card mm -hmm. on this. Talk a little bit about that and, and when you're reading this and, and kind of your take on your character's motivation for that and, and kind of how that fits into the whole overall picture. Um, well, you know, one thing I know about a lawyer is the truth isn't what happens in reality. The truth is whatever wins the case. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you're hired to represent somebody, good or bad, right or wrong, you have to represent them to win. So Octavia Spencer plays my sister and she's trying to get her granddaughter. Her son is a loser. I know he's a loser. Everyone knows he's a loser. But she won't admit that he's a loser. So my job is to get him out of this child's life as quickly as possible and get her into safe hands, being Octavia or Kevin's hands, and get her away from my loser of a nephew. So it has nothing to do with Kevin being racist. It has more to do with winning the case because this child's father is a loser. It's been, I mean, it's constantly uh, relevant in our society, these kind of racial things. Recently in the movie industry, uh, the whole Oscar nomination, the, the snub of um, you know, no major categories having any black uh, actors nominated or anything like that, the controversy about Selma, Ava DuVernay not being nominated. Do you guys have any kind of take on the current state of Hollywood in terms of that? Yeah, I do. I think the Lego movie got snubbed. That's yeah. a snub. <laughs> yeah. uh, I agree uh, with that, too. Uh, Selma got... Best Picture nomination. I don't understand how that's a snub, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I think that there is a problem that there needs to be more diverse roles and more diverse casting. But that's not the Academy Awards problem, mm -hmm. you know. There shouldn't be one or two movies every year with black actors, right. with Hispanic actors, you know. So that's a problem that goes back at the casting and financing level. By the time you come out to the awards, that that ship has sailed, mm -hmm. and, and I think you want to to want to blame the Academy is almost laughable. Uh, tell me a little bit too about Kevin Costner. You've worked with Kevin in the past. Um, you worked with Kevin in this movie, of course. Uh, talk to me about you know Kevin Costner and just your guys' experience. Well, in real life, the about. movies ch make everyone a little bigger. In real life, he's four foot seven. He's got a high <laughs> squeaky voice. Awesome. And he and he and he, the only horse you can put him on is those ones outside the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> but in the movies, you see, he looks like a hero and everything. But uh, but no, uh, I, Kevin was great. He was actually a lot of fun and easy to work with and he's just an all-american guy like he's the guy who sits in the backyard you know on a rock and chest you know chewing on a piece of straw he's just a regular he really day. is if you think of americana he's the poster child for americana man he's the closest thing we have to like uh, john wayne or gary cooper he's an yeah. old-fashioned kind of guy and, and i'm lucky I've, got, I've gotten to make a couple movies with him and become friends with him and and i you know the, the best compliment that I'll pay him is whenever I finish making a movie, I start thinking of how to get another movie going so I can get back in the boat and work with him again. Sure. Because he is a pro. And, um, and 
you know. The thing also is he's a big risk taker, you know. People are making a big deal that he put up with the money for this movie, but he's done it for like four or five of his own movies. Mm -hmm. He just believes in his movies and he does it. He's t he doesn't sit around and wait for studios to say yes. Last question for you. Uh, you guys are in Detroit right now as we speak. Uh, you guys were here last night, attended a red carpet event, uh, Q&A with fans after a screening of the film. Just talk about Detroit, talk about how last night went and what you guys like about you know, mixing it up with uh, Detroiters and fans of the movie. Uh, Detroit's great and last night couldn't have gone better. You know, the, the best thing about having a red carpet event and a, a small screening premiere in Detroit is, you know, no one here is jaded with the Hollywood aspect of going to a movie or, you know, seeing people who are in the movie. Everyone, it feels like your first movie. It feels like your first experience. You know, you're just as nervous and excited as they are. You know, so there's this, there's this energy that goes into it that you don't really get in New York or L.A. unless you're, you know, some huge mega star and people are just excited to be in the, same, in the presence of a mega star. But being a regular guy who just happens to be in a movie, that excitement is infectious. You can't get any less jaded as a right. crowd <laughs> when, when they're excited to see me. Okay, that tells you there's, a, there's not a whole lot of talent <laughs> coming through town. But, but this is a great town in terms of that. And, and, it, and it, it, people have always been very supportive of me, all kidding aside. And, and, and uh, it, it's also, the thing about it is, this is a real movie going crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when, you're, when you do these events in LA or New York, these are people that they make movies, they, 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 they write about movies, they, they don't even really watch movies other than how's this gonna do. The people that are, were there last night, those are film goers. Those mm -hmm. are real people that, that the movies entertain them and, and they're there at, to be a little extra part of their life. And so when, when, that, when an audience really likes a movie like that, it rings a bell just a little louder for me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great uh, talking to both of you. Um, Black Wait, and that's it? You're done? I'm done, man. That's oh, it. Oh, come on. you got to have quick. more questions than that. They only give me a couple seconds, oh, man. That's all right. All right. You got to do it. <laughs> hey, Thanks. I apologize for laughing. Oh, like no, you're that, cool, man. man. That's gonna be, I'm just going to repeat that for like Good. four or six minutes. Thank you. Yeah, Every time thank you, you ask a question, <laughs> yeah. you, you make I, go. You know, you, know what, you, you know what it was? <laughs> it, it, I'm telling you, this room is a non-flashback for me. I,